Okay, so I want to uh, address a couple of comments on the Sony SAWM500 subwoofer that had a double failing of the STK404-140 and 140S output chip. So Peter wrote, uh, we all love to blame the Chinese STK amplifiers as we are all aware that there were some fakes getting around some time ago. But from what I saw, the one that you opened has been designed properly and shouldn't have failed. The fact that the little driver transistor failed along with the output transistor, I'm thinking that the actual reason why it failed was due to something else before it. Either a resistor had gone out of tolerance or you may have a leaky capacitor, which would explain the hum. I would have checked the ESR, but most importantly, I would have checked the VLOS, which is what the Chinese use for leakage current of capacitors. That SK should not have died that quick unless something else in the circuit before it made sure it did. And I did a reply right here. He replied, the reason behind my original post was simply because the bad stigma that the Chinese made STKs have acquired from early productions. While there might be some fakes floating around out there, there's plenty that are as good as the originals. I built amplifiers based on Chinese STK amplifiers and they're still actually pretty good. So to see you install one only lasts a short time and the inside looked like it was well built and designed tells me something else caused. And I did not click read more, sorry. And another customer, uh, Mark, replied, the cheap failing STK packs are a real problem. We went through three for a customer. I had to tell him not to use more than one set of speakers at a time. So far, been a year. It's an STK0050. X-Ray Tony B has a video about getting a board with discrete transistors to replace that pack. Yes, I did look into that actually, but because I had that done on amplifier, I chose that route. The cost and time probably would be excessive in most cases. And so obviously my printer is low on ink. Uh, Circuit Blog said the SDK you got is a cheap knockoff of the original one. I know this because of the color of the writing on the back and from some of the markings on the body of the SDK itself. And I replied, you are correct. I think if I could have found an original Japanese IC, it would have been okay for many more years. I still have it. It still has all the capacitors and resistors. So let's go ahead and pull these things out. And we'll use the MK168, which will show V loss on capacitors. And we'll test these things. Okay, the first capacitor, which is a 10 at 100 volts, that's 9.8 microfarads with an ESR of 1.3 and a V loss of 0.6%. I'm gonna call that one good. The next one is a 47 at 100. Which measures 46.35 microfarads with an ESR of 0.48. I'm perfectly happy with that. And a V loss of 0.8%. Once again, totally fine in my book. Now this one is a 10 at 50 microfarads. Ten point ten microfarads measured with an ESR of 2 ohms, which is absolutely perfect, and a V loss of 1.1%. Absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with that at all. This one is a 220. at 25 volts. It's a little low on the microfarad, 169.4, with an ESR 0.71, which is just a hair on the high side, but a V loss of only 2%. Once again, very happy with that.
Now this one is a 100 at 100. 93.41 microfarads with an ESR 0.29. Perfectly happy with that at a V loss of 1%. Absolutely perfect. Nothing wrong with that one at all. Now these next two are stuck together. The first one will be a 100 at 25 volts. And it measures 92.24 microfarads with an ESR of 1.1 ohms. Perfectly happy. V loss is just a hair on the high side, 2.1%, but I've seen way, way worse. The next one is a 10 at 100 volts. which measures 9.549 microfarads, an ESR of 1.4 ohms, and a VLOS of 0.7 ohms. Once again, I don't really see anything wrong with these capacitors on this board. Next, let's go ahead and check the emitter resistor, as well as there's a couple of 1 watt and 2 watt resistors. There's a 100 ohm right here. And I think this one is a 4.7, and we want to check this capacitor, which is a 0.1, which is in the high frequency roll off. So it's meant to basically take the high frequencies to ground through this 4.7 ohm resistor. So let's go ahead and check those. Okay, here we go. This one is a 0.1 microfarad at 100 volts. And it does measure 0 0.1025 microfarads. Perfectly happy with that. Now this should be a 4.7 ohm resistor. And it measures 4.86. Once again, totally within tolerance. This one's going to be a 100 ohm resistor. And it measures 99.8 ohms. That is really close. Now, according to this, this is R712, and it is a one ohm resistor. And it measures 1.09. That's within 10% tolerance. Actually, 9%, perfectly fine. And so last, let's go ahead and check the emitter resistor. So each side of this should be 0.22 ohms. I've got 0.27, that's pretty doggone close in my book. And 0.27, they're both perfectly matched. Well, as far as I can tell, no defective components on this board whatsoever. I guess we could go ahead and do a quick check of these diodes and just do a forward junction test. So I'm just looking to see if I have any reverse leakage and I wanna see a forward junction and I do. Now these two are back to back. So 589, 590, and 590. So these are shorted together on that side and shorted together on that side. So they test absolutely perfect. And I thought while I'm here, I'll test every single resistor on this board just to see if they're close. So this one should be about a 22K and I get 21.8K, perfectly fine. This one looks like it's a 4.7K, 4.66, good with that. 
This one should be a 1K, 0.97, perfectly fine. Another 1K, 0.979. This one looks like it is a 56K, and I get 50K. I'm good with that. Uh, this one is a 33 ohm, and I get 33.8. This one looks like it's probably gonna be a 680 ohm. And I get 668, perfectly fine with that. And this one is a 56K, right on the money. I already tested this one, it's a one ohm, and on this meter it tests 1.5 because I do have some lead resistance because of the cheap Chinese leads that I'm using. And this one looks like it's an 88.2K, 8.08, .08, perfectly fine. And another one, 8.14, absolutely perfect. So all the resistors test fine. I'm not gonna bother testing the capacitors because there's probably resistors across them, even though 1.7 megs is perfectly fine on that one. That one tests open. 56K, and as I recall, there was a 56K resistor right there. and open on that one. So as far as I can tell, every single part on this board is in perfectly fine working order. Yep, it's just a case of the cheap Chinese ICs, no doubt about it. Now keep in mind that the audio comes in right here. It's coupled through a 1K resistor, and then it has this limiter circuit, which is a couple of 1SS133s, in the end, so the most it can generate is 0.7 volts positive or 0.7 volts negative, and then a 33 ohm resistor to ground. So if you look at the ratio of 33 ohms to 1000 ohms, there's not gonna be much going on here whatsoever. It's coupled through a 2.2 microfarad capacitor with a 56K pull down resistor so the voltage doesn't climb after that capacitor and then it's fed into pin three of the power amplifier IC. So everything in my book checks absolutely perfect. There is nothing wrong with this board. Every single component tests absolutely great. It's just a cheap Chinese knockoff. Once again, circuit blog that said the SDK you got is a cheap knockoff of the original one. I know this because of the color of the writing on the back and from some of the markings on the body. Yes, I've been dealing with these things basically since the late 70s. Even before I had my job, I was doing this for customers when I was just a kid, and I can tell these markings are not the original Japanese markings. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And once again, this is shame on me. Everybody, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.